Is there any declarations of interest? Yes, Chair, I have a declaration of interest. A, an application number 1901376FUL. The applicant is known to myself. All right, okay. That's the first one. Okay. <clears throat> any apologies? Chair, can I just go back to the declaration of interest? Oh. I don't see Councillor Watson that says he's got connectivity issues, but he's got a declaration of interest um, and application. Just bear with me. Um, and, and unless you can go on, Councillor Watson, are you able to? Convey that. There he's there. He's on. Councillor Watson. Unmute. No, your lips are moving, but. Right, Councillor Watson's on, on, unable to um, unmute. I think I, I know he's got connectivity issues. So it's it's application 20, I believe, 00412 treble P. Um, the um, agent he's, he's got um, the agent is, is known to him in terms of the, the, the company that's acting for in terms of the planning application. Um, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll manage it as appropriate. Yep. Okay. Okay. Right. Apologies. Chair, apologies for Lynn Anderson. Okay. All right. And Jim Logue. Yep. And we've also got an apology from Councillor Tom Johnston. Okay. Right. Great stuff. OK, we'll go straight to the plan applications. First one's page 814. Mr Alan Freeland, single dwelling house yeah. with the sack. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, did I get, can someone put me into a holding room? I'm just about, oh, to, aye, aye. I'm just about to do that, Councillor Douglas. Right, just, just, out. just bear with me. Right. Is that him in the lobby? Yep, Councillor Douglas yep. is in the in the lobby. Right, okay. Uh, it's a Mr. Alan Freeland, single dwelling house with detached connection with incidental domestic accommodation. It's at Captain's Walk, Cleland Motherwell, and the recommendation is grant. Is that agreed? Agreed. Right. You let Trevor back in again, Martin? Then? Yeah, well do. So okay. Can we take the next two together? The Advanced Construction Scotland um, and its residential developments of 104 units, including alterations to site levels and formation of a boundary fence at, at 2.5 metres high in the western boundary. It's at Springhall Farm, Springhall Road, Stain. And the next one is the Master Plan and Phasing Development of Application Covering Matters Specified by Conditions of Planning Permission and Principle. Again, Spring Hill Farm, Spring Hill Road, Stain Shots. Uh, the recommendation is grant for both. Is that agreed? Agreed. Okay. Thank you. The, the next one is Pro Antoria Holding. Uh, it's a mixed use development including cinema, commercial leisure, food store, hotel, food and beverage, car showroom, business incubator uses with associated landscapes, access, parking, infrastructure, site of Westway Retail Park, Napier Road, Ward Park, Cumbernauld. The recommendation here is grant. We received a late a objection from Tesco. And given the history of this, and we had a judicial review, it might be better to continue this to the January and get a full supplementary report on on their objections. But it's, it's up to the committee uh, if they're happy with that or not. Hey, any comments? Anyone want to? We'll, 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 we'll go with your recommendation, Harry. Thanks I, very I much, would Mike. support that compared obviously we've we've had that judicial review it would yep. be a uh, diligent and our duty to, to hold that back for later discussion. Okay, great stuff. Thank you. We'll continue that. Excellent idea. Uh, next one is Miss Elizabeth Farnham. S forty two application via condition three of a plan permission excluding community health care and retail. Uh, elements and alter the description of the planning permission. To the direction of a residential development of 500 dwelling houses with associated roads and infrastructure sitting between Canbro Road, Canbro, Coatbridge. 
The recommendation is Grant. Agreed. Agreed. Is that agreed? Thank you. The next one is a Mr. James Jackson, two storey detached dwelling site at east of 57 Barcaldine Avenue, Christon. And the recommendation is Grant. Agreed. 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 The next one is Hallam Land Management, residential development with associated infrastructure, landscaping and access and principal section 42 application for new permission, revising wording of condition 11 of permission and the land at land to the east of 2628 Airdrie Hill Street, Royards, Airdrie. The recommendations grant. Agreed. Is that agreed? Thank you very agreed. much. Agenda item three is the planning enforcement appeals decision, pages 83 and 84, read for noting. Agreed. 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 Agenda item four is a listing of few part gardens gateway uh, to make it as a category C listed building, pages 85 to 92. Is that agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your attendance. We'll hang on for the local review body now. Good morning, colleagues. Thank you. Good morning. I'll mute myself. Um, uh, if uh, that's a plan finished, I'll just move straight on to the local review committee. Um, Mark, uh, the apologies are already in. It'll not be any different, I don't think. Um, uh, moving to declaration of interest. Are there any declaration of interest in ethical standards in public life? Nothing on this. Okay, moving on to the, the item two, which is plan application 20 stroke 00238 stroke FUL, which is the dwelling house at the site of Old Millcroft Road, Millcroft Road Cumbernauld, uh, and it's pages five to 102 with a decision notice on page 7 to 10. Uh, you'll see from the, we'll go through the, the local review procedure, stages one to four. Uh, and Gordon Lang is making the presentation. Thanks, Gordon. Uh, 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 thanks, convener. I was going to try and share that title screen, but I suspect it might not work. Um, so if, if everyone's happy with the, the pages that they've already got um, uh, in front of them, uh, I'll, I'll uh, take you through it. Uh, planning application, as convener said, is a site west of Millcroft or Mill, uh, Millcroft, Cumbernauld. Uh, it's located in a greenbelt location, consists of a grassed area with an existing car, static caravan on site. To the east of the application site, uh, there's the Shank Burn, uh, which is a site of importance for nature conservation, and Millcroft Belt Mill, which is a Category B listed building. And to the west, there's a detached dwelling house. Uh, in your packs, uh, on pages 89 to 102, we've got photographs and map extracts uh, illustrating the location. You've got aerial photographs uh, showing the context of the site and its surroundings. And you've also got plans and elevations of the proposals. Also in your packs, you do have the uh, decision notice, uh, the notice of review submitted to the applicant, the report of handling, the representations received from interested parties, the extract of relevant policy documents, photographs uh, and map location, uh, as I've already uh, outlined, and also additional papers and representations received from a range of interested parties during consideration of the application. I'll now hand back uh, to, to you, Convener, uh, for a decision on the sufficiency of that information to proceed. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, do you agree you've got enough, enough information to carry through stage two and stage three? Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Okay, let's move on. Go with your permission, uh, convener, I'll, I'll do what we've done in these virtual, and I'll go through the, the full presentation before returning um, for an agreement on the, the yep. policy and the material. Okay, set. that's per the new procedure on WebEx. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, right, I'm just getting my, my speech uh, uh, full, full, fully up there. The proposals for a one and a half storey detached dwelling house with five bedrooms, four en suites. Terrell Garage, upper floor balcony and ground floor entrance porch. Uh, you've got the site plan, the floor plan, uh, the site plan on page 96, the floor plans on pages 97 and 98, the elevations on pages 99 to page 101. And the applicant has indicated that this is a, a dwelling house in association with the farm 
uh, which they run uh, in association with a farmer. And look through the policy criteria and factors noted in the planning officer's report of handling, which is in pages 43 to 48 of your papers, to assist the local review body in its assessment and determination of this case. The application raises no strategic issues in terms of the Clyde Plan, uh, Strategic Development Plan 2017, and therefore would fall to be assessed in terms of North Lanarkshire Local Plan 2012 and the policies therein. Local Plan e Map Extract is in page 102, and the relevant policies in the Local Plan are detailed in pages 59 to 88 of your papers and can be summarised by their titles. Policy NB3A, Assessing Development in the Green Belt. Policy NB1B, Protecting the national, uh, Natural and Built Environment. Policy DSP4, which relates to the quality of development. And uh, additionally, Supplementary Planning Guidance, SPG07, Assessing Development in the Green Belt is relevant and material to the consideration of this proposal. Planning Officer's report of handling considered the proposal did not comply with the terms of adopted local plan policy NBA 3 Green Belt and the North Lanarkshire local plan, and that it had not been demonstrated that the development was necessary for agriculture. The report of handling also considered the proposal contrary to policy DSP4 and NBA 1B, and that its scale would be out of keeping with the local environment and damaging to the setting of the adjacent listed building. The Port of Handling therefore recommended that the proposed development fails to accord with those policies for reasons outlined in pages, page 47 of your papers and in the reasons for refusal on page 9. The application was subsequently refused planning permission on the 29th September of this year. I now highlight other considerations noted in the Planning Officer's Report of Handling or raised in the review application eh, to assist you in your assessment and determination of the case. In relation to consultations, consultations were carried out with NLC Pollution Control, NLC Green Space and NLC Roads Development Service. They advised a number of issues but raised no objections to the proposal. These responses are in pages 48 of your second papers. If you wanted to look at them, you would have to go to the top of the screen to catch the page number uh, digitally. CPAD originally objected to the proposal, uh, uh, raising concerns around flooding, but subsequently withdrew the objection on receipt of additional information from the applicant. That response is on page 23 of your second papers. In terms of representations, there were objections from the owners and occupiers of the neighbouring property in respect of this application, and they can be found in page 119 of your papers and pages 90. Nine to fifty of your part two papers. The representation submission is summarised in pages forty four and forty five of the papers, uh, which is that in the report of handling for materiality is given as consideration is given to materiality. Sorry. Want to particularly draw your attention to the letter of representation in pages fifty six and fifty seven of your papers. Uh, which relates to the objective view information submitted by the applicant as part of the review are new matters which should not be considered by the LRB. This relates to the regulations governing the submission of information for the local review body. The information in this case provides suggested potential timescales for the development of the farm business and subsequent length of period during which the house will be used in relation to agriculture and the management of the farm prior to the applicant's subsequent retire. In the application, it was indicated that there would be a short period uh, of uh, use as an agricultural management building and residential premises, and thereafter a three to seven year phase retirement period. The objectors are holding that this was a new matter brought uh, to the committee and therefore shouldn't be considered. However, the regulation, and we've consulted legal on this matter, the regulation says that this was a matter in front of the planning officer. It was a matter that weighed in consideration the length of time eh, of the, the various uses of this building, and therefore was additional information and not a new matter, and additional information as permitted under the regulations. As, however, for the members to consider the weight to be given to this information, because it does relate eh, to a material matter and 
the ultimate refusal of the application. As I say, it's for members to consider the material weight to be given to this. In terms of the review application, the application submitted the review statement. That's on pages 11 to 42 of your papers and includes the resubmission of design statements and agricultural labour report. In summary, the applicant's views that the report of handling wrongly stated the timescales um, after which the dwelling would become a retirement home. And this therefore led to re reason for refusal one, it being contrary to MB3A, being wrongly arrived at. The review statement further states uh, the belief of the applicants that the scale of the house is appropriate for the location and the setting and is not detrimental to the setting of the adjacent listed building. They do, however, indicate at one point that design is a secondary issue and any concerns over design could and should have been the subject of discussion had reason one not been used as a reason for refusal. They also say a lack of communications and those errors in the handling report, which led to an incorrect conclusion, which should be reviewed. I just want to emphasise the particular point that the submission does explore in detail the contention that the reasoning behind the decision for refusal was based on an incorrect statement that the house would become a retirement home in seven years. It explains how this is wrong. It explains that the development is justified by the Labour report, which is mentioned in the report of handling and takes the opportunity to provide that additional information, which defines in their terms the period during which the agricultural holding would be further developed and which the applicant, after which the applicant would retire. As with all applications, each case requires to be considered in its own merits and in accordance with policy unless material considerations outweigh the provisions of the policies. And in this case, as you will see, there are two areas of policy uh, to be considered. One is the principle policy and the principle of the development and whether it's an appropriate development within the Green Belt. And the second area to be considered is the issue of the design and quality of the development and its impact on the setting of the listed building. And members could decide um, on them in conjunction or separately when reaching a decision on the application. These are the factors and issues which require to be considered by the body when determining the application, and I'll now hand back to you, Convener, eh, for further consideration of the policy position, material considerations, eh, the decision and reason justification. Thank you for that, Gordon. Um, is there any questions or observations for the officer from anyone? I think uh, 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 Councillor uh, McPay. Sorry, Councillor McPake, first of all, if you're, if you're coming after him, put yourself in the chat bar. Can I just ask, first of all, um, before you're making uh, any observations, that you do not uh, uh, move any recommendations until after everyone has had a chance to speak. Thank you. Michael. Thanks, Convener. <clears throat> a few questions on this one, uh, Convener. Um, the CEPA report seems to be crucial. You know, the CEPA, CEPA initially was the main objector. Um, and then all of a sudden they, they've withdrawn the rejection after consultation with the client, I think. Um, so I wonder if you could outline if that is, is, that, is that normal? Why did that happen? Um, the other couple of questions would be around about the Greenbelt issue. Um, it's clearly been used as agricultural just now, and it has been for some time by all accounts. Um, so can you determine, is it Greenbelt or is it agricultural? Because clearly this is crucial in this, uh, this time in this this application, and um, the other question convener just now would be on the scale of the house. I don't know if any of you have ever been up round about there, and this is I know very well. But I used to go up there when I was small, little, and you know farmhouses basically now you. You wouldn't believe some of the, the scale of housing uh, is in the area. I know we're dealing with one case, one case only here, but that's something I would like uh, a wee bit of background on. Thanks. Thanks for that, Michael, that's good for your observations. Gordon? Yeah, it, in relation to the, the, the CEPA objection, uh, I wouldn't say it was abnormal um, for applicants to be given the opportunity to come back. It's my understanding in this case, 
uh, looking at the documents that the applicants carried out some work, which was an issue of contention with the objector, as you might see from the objector's letters, and then having carried out work uh, in relation to the, the site uh, and the adjacent burn, SEPA decided to withdraw their objection. Uh, and as it stands, SEPA are not making an objection uh, uh, in this case. Uh, and that would be part of the uh, consideration which the plan officer would make in discussion uh, with the applicants and SEPA uh, as, as the, a resolution would be sought. In terms of the Greenbelt agricultural question, I don't think um, it's a question of the use of the land. It's a question of the use of the building. Uh, the land is Greenbelt and it's an agricultural holding. The agri-environment will, or is it both? And it would be for members to decide the materiality of that balance. Similarly, in terms of the scale and nature of the house, I can't advise on the appropriateness of the scale or nature. I can point out the policy, and it would be for members to decide whether they felt, on the basis of the information in front of them, that the scale of the dwelling, uh, the design of the dwelling, was suitable for that particular location, and whether, having decided that it was suitable or not, it would have any detrimental effect to the setting of the listed building. You, you will need to retire. So, to, to refuse it on that ground, I, I think, is you know, a wee bit strange. So, I wonder if you could give me a wee bit of more information on the scale of the, the, uh, the, the development and if you would like to comment on any other developments nearby, because there are, um, there are many. Uh, Councillor, it's not for me to, to comment on the scale. We, that is, is on the plans. Uh, and it's not for me to comment on how that compares to, to local houses. It's for me to advise on that that is a material consideration. And uh, it would be for members. And uh, as with planning officers, a, a members' interpretation and members' understanding of the appropriateness of scale or the appropriateness of design or the appropriateness of materials. Back to SEPA. And also, is this classed as a rural development? You get Gordon to answer that, but Gordon, he keeps it stab at that. It, it sits within the Greenbelt area. The question at hand is whether this is an, an appropriate development in principle and then designed for the Greenbelt. But yes, it sits within a rural area, which is why it's governed by that Greenbelt policy. And you have to look at the policy and consider whether, in your opinion, the evidence before you from the agricultural with the building and that otherwise it might be appropriate. All I can do at this moment is, is advise you that those are the policies that you have to consider uh, and make a judgment on. Michael, you want a supplementary? Very much, convener. Uh, I just feel as if, uh, that, you know, round about this area, Michael, Michael indicates, and I've already seen it myself, that most of the farmhouses up there have got alternative accommodation there. So I take it that the Volgo mostly sort of retirement development here up there. So I don't think this this uh, would be out of context if this was approved. Thank you. A number of years, years um, are currently used for. Um, we would be, be unaware of. Uh, there's also, there's obviously the nearby um, leisure village. Uh, there are agricultural holdings uh, nearby. Uh, what they are currently used for, I can't comment on. Uh, but the nature of the area is there are agricultural holdings, there are old historic buildings, uh, there are and have been in the past applications for residential buildings, there are and have been in the past applications for uh, buildings in relation to uh, agriculture. Um, uh, uh, and, and a question from Greg Collection. So there are a range of buildings in the area, but they're currently used. The rules for farming are quite robust. If you've got a farm and you want to build a, a house on that farm, it's for farm family only that's going to be working on the farm. Now we're building retirement homes. His son maybe want to build a retirement home. And Maybe want to build a retirement home. We could be open, open a whole bag of worms here because the, the rules on farming is for farm workers only. 
Am I right on that? John? Uh, the, the justification, there is a justification for uh, development in relation to agriculture. Um, this is a submission which states that at some point it will become a retirement home. There is an agricultural labour report here. Um, Councillor McPake um, is not incorrect in stating that at some point um, farmers would seek to retire. Uh, the, the applicant also drew attention to the uh, letter from the chief planner in relation to control uh, of, of these elements whereby we used to uh, utilise planning conditions to tie uh, such developments to agricultural. That's not something that is used as a matter of course and that letter from the chief planner would discourage that. Um, so, uh, yes, agricultural use is a justification. If this was purely a retirement home and therefore a domestic property, uh, councillors would have to consider whether by the applicant's own submission of this is both. Okay, thank you for that. I've got um, I've, I've got Sophia Coyle, uh, Trevor and Michael, but M Michael's already been in. Lily's up there before it. Michael, just wait until after the other people have had a chance to speak, and I'll let you back in, okay? Um, so it's Councillor Coyle, Sophia. Thanks very much. I wasn't really going to come in with John, the disrespect to you, John, but we can look at things as a we're just setting a precedent, and I think the signs of the tone, and I've read through the paperwork, it sounds as if it was a comment generally offhand saying, or oh, possibly retire in seven years. But I think, obviously, with the no communications through the telephone and that through the COVID, that's been the case, I think, for quite a lot of people. There's been a lack of communication there, and that could have been easily fixed. But quite a day paper. I think it states quite clearly in the paperwork, and I think it's been a wee bit misconstrued about the retirement home, and I think people are just hanging on that fact. And I think we've got to look at the paperwork, say, the paperwork says they've got a long history of rural business, agriculture, and this is what they're looking for this house for. Thanks, Chair. Well, I don't think there was a question in amongst all that. Uh, um, it's well, not really that well, I never moved yeah, a yeah. motion, so it's a question or a comment, so I commented. Okay, that's fine. No, no problem. I was just saying that there's nothing really for, for Gordon to answer to that one. Uh, Councillor Douglas. Unmute. Don't often do it. Am I right in thinking that it is possible to tie the house to the business? I know it's something that you said, I don't think we do it now, but it is a possibility to do that. I think we would have, we would have to refer to the, the, the letter from the chief planner a number of years ago, which um, I would say positively discouraged the use of conditions uh, tying uh, houses to agricultural use uh, for a range of reasons, particularly that it then limited the flexibility uh, to reflect the changing circumstances um, on the use of the farm or the use of the house. So uh, without wishing to be uh, corrected necessarily uh, by the, the planning manager, it's not something that planning would seek to do as a matter of course eh, because of that, because there's quite clear direction from the chief planner in relation to these matters. Can I get a supplementary? Well, it's, but, but it is within our gift to be able to do that. That is correct. Is we, we could elect to do that, but it, it would be, it potentially would be challengeable. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Reasons. Okay. Councillor McPeak. Chair, thanks for your indulgence. Actually, just when I heard Gordon speaking there, um, I, I, I might be wrong, but I, I think the adjacent property, which is, I think, the listed building here, 
was at one point not that long ago um, turned into a public house or a, a bistro, bistro type thing. Now, the precedent here has already been set in because if they, if they can turn that into a business, yeah. but even an agricultural business quite clearly here is looking to the uh, house, Gordon, would you have any comment on that? Gordon, in, in, in terms of it is my understanding that there is a was a restaurant area. Sorry, I was trying to look for a bit of paper. What would you, would you mind repeating the question? I do apologise. The question would be: Would would there be any precedent set by the the listed building, which formerly not that long ago turned itself into a bistro restaurant and then subsequently closed down again? So obviously, there's been a business in that area, whereas we've got an agricultural business here looking to. Uh, build a house. Would there be any comment? Yeah, I, I don't. We don't tend to, and I know we've we've discussed this before. The issue of precedent and whether precedent is a is a planning matter. Each of these things would have to be justified um, on its own merits. Uh, I would imagine that a bistro uh, may be justified in relation to potentially tourist development within the Greenbelt area, and there's a potential justification. In relation to that, it's agriculture, forestry, and tourism are the, the three normal justifications. Uh, it would be a different set of considerations that would be taken into account in looking at a tourism uh, development as opposed to an agricultural development. Uh, each of them would be supported by information in relation to tourism, potentially a business plan, but in relation to agriculture, uh, there would be uh, an agricultural labour report, which is something that's been submitted in this particular case. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I don't have anything else in the chat bar. I don't see anyone else waving. Councillor uh, Convener, Councillor Goldsack, um, I think had connection issues, um, and I've had an email to say that he wishes to speak. Um, is that correct, Councillor Goldsack? I'm not getting anything from Mark. I'm, I'm not getting anything uh, from Councillor Gold. Like to speak. Hello, I'm speaking. Sorry, I'm not Again. getting it. Councillor Goldsack, can you hear? Yeah, I can. I can hear you fine. Yeah. Can't hear Councillor Goldsack. Is he able to put, put it on the chat bar? Question. He may be I'm able to do so. My my yeah. advice. My advice, and I don't know if you can hear me, Councillor Goldsack. My 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 advice you, is yeah. clear to the local review body, though, as 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 that. Um, I think you've been trying to join the meeting um, for the last fifteen twenty minutes, um, and my now. understanding is that you won't have heard the the presentation or the the, the questions and answers. Um, and given it's a quasi judicial committee, I think that would preclude you from actually. Um, been involved in the determining of the application, unless you can advise me that you've 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 heard all the the the, the evidence that's been provided this morning. I, I do have a lot of information. I've visited the site twice. I do have information. But but I I can appreciate that, Councillor Goldsack. But in terms of the 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 code of conduct for a uh, quasi judicial uh, committees, is that you need to be in the meeting for the whole period. Um, to ensure that you've heard all the information. I know you you might have a lot of background information to that, but the planning right, advisor um, had provided quite, quite substantial information in response. Well, yeah. well, well, Councillor Goldsack, and 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 I'll, I'll I'll be guided by you. I'll be guided by you. But I, I, the the meeting is 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 being recorded, um, and I, I can see that you've you've been on and off the meeting. Um, at various yeah, times, so so I, I think we need to. Leave, yeah, I, I think we need, need to leave that with you, and that that would be your decision, Councillor Goldsack. My 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 advice it would, would be that if you don't think that you've heard the full evidence provided this morning, then you may want to to not be involved in determining the application. I can only provide have, that advice to you. Okay, I have heard. I um, the lady Coyle speaking. I heard McPake speaking. I have heard some part of it. And I do have information, like I say, I visited yep, there yep. twice. Well, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I, I suppose, just, just finally, Councillor Goldsack, 
there was a, there was an overview presentation by the planning advisor to the local review body, which provided substantial information um, to the local review body in terms mm -hmm. of the, the the reasons for refusal of the application, the notice of review, the material considerations. If you've only heard questions going back and forth, then I would advise you to 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 obviously take stock of that and 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 make a decision. And um, hearing part of it would 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 not um, enable you. Um, and in my own opinion, to, to, to take a decision, but um, I'm happy to be guided by yourself. Uh, I, I've already. Councillor Holt, sir. I think you said you've already made your mind up, Councillor Goldsack, and, and and I think if you if you looked at the the, the council. Councillor's code of conduct. Yeah, well, you, you can't make a. Right, now, now, now Councillor Goldsack, I'm, I'm just going to take you back just, 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 just a second. That you can't predetermine a decision that you're going to take on a planning application without hearing the the, the information provided at the meeting. Yeah. But, but, well, Councillor Goldsack, right, and 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 and, and apologies, apologies for for. I, I I think you need to be clear. And uh, right, Councillor Goldsack, I think I need to be clear. Just, just if you if you mind, just give me a, a second. I think we need to be clear that the paperwork uh, that, that's provided and any site visit or, or or local knowledge that an elected member may have in relation to a planning site. Would, would 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 provide part of the information that would allow you to take a decision. The su substantive part of that decision making process from yourself would would not be prejudged and would be based on the information that's provided today. And 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 as, and as I say, there was quite a substantial amount of information that that was provided in terms of quasi judicial meetings. You need to be present for the whole period of the meeting. Councillor Goldsack, if you haven't been, been uh, present for the whole of the meeting, then obviously I'm going to have to shut you down. Uh, Mark has said that the, the determination is yourself. If you're telling us you've been here since well, the start, then fine, I'll let you ask the question. Well, 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 yeah, I understand that, but if you haven't been in for the whole, whole lot, then I, I, I can't allow your question. You'd have to tell me whether you've been in or out, or you've been on for the whole, and you've heard the whole presentation from, and, and all the contributions that, that's been in. You need to know that now. Sorry, I, colleagues, I'm going to move on to the next next person here. I, I can't hear a word from Councillor Goldtrust. I think he's, he's dropped off again. If he has dropped off. Uh, I'll come back to him. If he said he's, he's been hearing us, then we can get him at the end, if we're all happy with that. OK, Councillor Lennon, I've seen your hand up there. I see it in chat bar now. Chair, it was, it was just to highlight, Chair, we all due respect, obviously, for you interjecting this position here, because that was over five minutes. <laughs> Councillor Goldsack, I'm not getting you. I wasn't speaking, I was just listening. Councillor Goldsack. I think Councillor S. Coyle is looking to come in, can you know? Sophia. Bill, I think Mark said he sees drops in and drops off and I think he's very good at keeping us right whether we like what he says to us sometimes or he likes keeping us right and I think he's obviously given his advice there and I think we've got to take it because this is a live recording we've got to keep ourselves right and obviously if he's not been in and heard the whole thing the procedure is we can't accept him in and unfortunately that's just the way it is if he's not here to start we Gordon, given the presentation, I think we've got to obviously drop out. Okay, thank you for that. Councillor Goldsax.
Colleagues, I think I'm going to have to move on here. Uh, I, I haven't heard Councillor Goldtracks apart from a couple of words throughout any of the, the times that he's, he's come in. Um, so time is moving on now. I'm going to have to move on. I don't see anyone else, any questions from anyone else or any observations. So I'm going to move uh, to the vote now on this item. Um, and as a convener, I'm going to move the decision. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I, 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 there, there is no connection there, so I'm going to have to move on. Um, so, as a convener, I'm going to move the, the decision notice. It's on page 710, highlighted in page 9. Do you have a seconder? I'll second that. I'll second that. Right. Trevor seconded it, was it? Uh, anyone otherwise minded? Chair. Yeah. I'm on the uh, council McPeak here. I'm on uh, the otherwise minded chair. Yeah. I, I would like to move the, the agriculture report uh, calculate um calculations uh, the the house is needed. The refusal recommendations are based on conditions that the house will be a retirement home for eighty seven years. Having considered that, I don't think that's the case. Um in terms of the the policy NB N, NBE um, DA, I think the grounds have been met there, so I would move Grant. Mark, are we fine with that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do we have a seconder? Councillor Coyle? Can I second that, Michael please? Coyle? Can I second that, convener? Okay, so... I've got that, Michael. Okay, so we have the proposal, which is to is to refuse which from myself and seconded and we have a, the the amendment from Michael McPake seconded by Michael Coyle. Mark? Yeah, I'll just I'll just run through the, the, the vote uh, convener. So just, just to be clear that the, the motion, if you're looking for a motion, it would be refusal. If you're looking if if you're going to, to go for amendment, then it would be grant from, from Councillor McPake and Councillor Coyle and obviously there's abstain as as well as the which is the option. So I'll, I'll run through the elected members just now. So Councillor Anderson is not on the call. So well, Councillor Beveridge. Amendment. Councillor Burgess. Amendment. Motion. Councillor oh, Councillor Burgess, was that motion or amendment? That was motion. Motion. Right, apologies, I think. Right, Councillor M. Coyle. Amendment. Thank you. Councillor S. Coyle. Grant. Councillor Curran. Amendment. I, I've got that, Councillor S. Coyle. <laughs> down is, down is um, amendment. So Councillor Curran is motion. Councillor Douglas. Motion. motion. Councillor Farouk. Amendment. Councillor Fotheringham. Amendment. Councillor Goldsack, I think we've, we've, we've ascertained, Councillor Goldsack, that you, you, you're unable to participate in the voting. Uh, Councillor Grayman. I think that was motion, Councillor Graham, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Councillor uh, Tom Johnson as an apology. Councillor Kelly. Motion. Councillor Lennon. Motion. Councillor Logan is an apology. Councillor McGregor is not on. Uh, Councillor McLaren. Motion. Councillor McPeak. Amendment. Councillor McVeigh. Motion. Councillor Quigley. Motion. Councillor Reading. Motion. Councillor Shields. Motion. Councillor Stokes. Amendment. Councillor Stubbs was un unfortunately unable to go on um, despite a num numerous attempts. Um, Councillor Watson. 
Mark, I won't vote because I was in and out and missed a bit of it. That's fine, Councillor Watson. Thank you. Um, Colleagues, that's the, the voting concluded for the, the, the motion. There was um, attracted 11 votes for the amendment, was seven votes, so the application is refused. OK, colleagues, I don't have any other business, so I'll conclude the meeting. Thank you for all for your attendance. Vote for the Chair. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.